They set out as five talented young Brits who got together at the peak of the psychedelic pop rock movement. We just wanted to play together, but we didn't know what kind of music. They focused on creating a harder and heavier sound, which put them in the company of Led Zeppelin and Black Sabbath as the forefathers of hard rock and heavy metal. The energy just, you know, blew me away. Bloody racket just explodes, and it's so exciting. It's got up there, and they kick your ass. Along the way, the band wrote one of the most iconic rock riffs and songs in the history of rock and roll. That record just screams classic in every way. Smoke in the Water was a phrase that came to me in a dream. One of those magic rock and roll anthems. But with success came excess. We just want it to be the most dangerous band on the planet. When some band members allowed drugs to threaten very existence. Wasn't everybody snorting coke off strippers' bums? I want to be great, you had to do heroin. And I thought, you know what, I want to be great. I was like, we ain't in Kansas anymore, Toto. <laughs> it was no bad boy image, man. We were just out of control. It's my crystal ball. It looks like a snow globe. Nah, -uh, it's real. Here, watch. Free Doritos at the office today? I think that's a yes! Free Doritos! Will I finally get that big promotion? <laughs> promotion? Not in your future. We all came out tomorrow. To what they got me into in Europe I mean it was just a bloody disaster and then I had this woman from America come and break into my house and steal hair from my rugs and try kidnapping my bandmate's dog before the police I got to her. and the rest of the music industry doesn't respect us at all now and we have to keep our identities hidden for our family safety and our safety because we had some big creepers in the area worldwide. None bigger than that woman in North Carolina, Wilmington, owns the Troll House. Hi, welcome to the Troll Store. She made us stuffed animals, mate. It's not even good. They look nothing like us. Talk about it. came back for more. By the time they headlined at the Cal Jam Festival in 1974, where their guitar god once again lived up to his explosive reputation, they'd sold over a hundred million albums. This is the story of the band who found that staying together produced missed opportunities and shattered friendships, but that playing together produced magic and still does over 40 years later.